Dear students, in this lecture, we will discuss the specifications of potable water as per the Indian standards, uh, BI standards, and uh, disinfection of water by um, disinfection of water by chlorination method. And the, at the end, we discuss the breakpoint chlorination. Now, come to the specifications of potable water. This potable water. We always expect a good quality water. It should be sparkling clear. It should be sparkling clear and odorless. See, we don't like any odor during when during drinking of the water. And also, the taste should be pleasant. The water should be pleasant in taste. And should be perfectly cool, cool in the sense uh, not the refrigerated water or not the hot water. The water should be at uh, room temperature. And uh, the turbidity of the drinking water should not exceed 10 ppm. So when this turbidity exceeds 10 ppm, we can see the particles uh, floating in the water, which we don't like that. And uh, it should be free from objectionable minerals such as lead, arsenic, chromium, manganese salts. This lead, arsenic, chromium, manganese are the toxic elements. They should not, they, the drinking water should be free from such toxic element salts. Not only that, it should be free from objectionable gases like H2S, ammonia, etc. They give uh, this H2S and ammonia not only toxic, they give odor to the water. They impart odor to the water. And uh, pH should be in the range of 7 to 8. Alkalinity should not be high. The drinking water, if the drinking water is a little basic in nature, alkaline in nature, we feel the taste, uh, we feel the water is tasty and that alkalinity also should not exceed more than 8. And uh, total dissolved solids should not exceed 500 ppm. So dissolved solids should be less than 500 ppm and uh, it, sh it should be free from the disease causing microorganisms. It must be free from all the microorganisms like uh, uh, bacteria, protozoans or fungus, any other disease causing microorganisms. And uh, the fluoride content, fluoride content uh, should be less than 1.5 ppm. Chlorine sulfate content should not exceed 250 ppm. Next, uh, sterilization by chlorination. So this sterilization could be done in the towns, villages, uh, throughout the world. Uh, this sterilization is done before supplying to the household purposes. So it is uh, the, the municipal water is treated uh, first uh, sedimentation etc. All the impurities are removed from the municipal water. Then it is subjected to chlorination or sterilization by chlorination and then supplied to the households. Now it is a this chlorination is very famous. It is a worldwide used method and uh, uh, it, it is a efficient uh, disinfectant also and very cheap, easy to operate. And uh, uh, this chlorine, uh, let me read one more time. Chlorination is the most commonly used disinfectant in water treatment throughout world. And it can be employed directly as a gas. We can inject it in the form of gas or in the form of concentrated chlorine solution in water. And see, when this chlorine gas or chlorine liquid concentrated chlorine solution injected into the water, it produces hypochlorous acid. This hypochlorous acid is a powerful germicide. You can see chlorine, this is Cl2 and water. So it is dissolved in it and convert produced a hypochlorous acid along with the hydrochloric acid, both are 
very good germicides strong disinfectants now this uh, hypochlorous acid reacts with the microorganism so it inhibits the um, generally the bacteria cell wall bacteria cell wall is made of a capsule this capsule protects the bacteria always uh, and mostly it is made of cellulose this cellulose is synthesized by the enzymes uh, produced by the bacteria so that the capsule is always uh, um, protecting the bacteria now by adding this hypochlorous acid we can inhibit the enzyme functioning uh, the, we can inhibit or we can stop producing the capsule around the bacteria so that the bacteria is not protected and killed in this way the hypochlorous acid shows uh, disinfection action on the micro organisms now this is the chlorinator in which uh, we uh, perform this uh, chlorination process it is a large cylindrical tower we call uh, call it as chlorinator and uh, in the see the arrangement we have a number of baffle plates here these baffle plates are having small slit here small slit each and every baffle plate is having a small slit this slit provides the, the water and our concentrated solution to mix thoroughly now from the top raw water is injected and concentrated chlorine solution is injected and this chlorine doses around 0.3 to 0.5 ppm and here this during when the water and the concentrated chlorine solution are passing through through this baffle plates they are thoroughly mixed by when they are passing down in the tower so that the water coming coming the water at the end it is completely disinfected and we can collect the disinfected water at the bottom of this chlorinator this is the method very simple this chlorination disinfection of chlorination is done in a chlorinator this chlorinator is a long cylindrical tower in which we have number of buffer plates these buffer plates are having small uh, exits these exits or slits um, um, makes uh, water and chlorine to mix thoroughly so that the disinfection action is is uh, taking place uh, very efficiently in the water now the factors which are affecting efficiency of the chlorine in this disinfection action the first one temperature of the water the rate of reaction with enzymes increases with the temperature consequently death rate of microorganisms by chlorine increases with rising temperature see here uh, the when enzymes uh, are uh, reacting more with the hypochlorous acid when the temperature is increasing so when this chemical reaction occurs more fast than there are more uh, uh, inhibited enzymes are inhibited so that the death rate of the microorganisms uh, by chlorine also increases next uh, time of contact time of uh, contact death rate of microorganisms by chlorine is proportional to the number of microorganisms remaining alive initially the death rate is maximum and with time it goes on decrease because in the beginning we have the number of microorganisms more as the time of contact is increasing the microorganisms are killed so and their number is decreasing so that the death rate also decreases with the time so the in the beginning very high death rate and slowly it is going to be down next ph of the water generally acidic ph so the ph between 5 to 6.5 are most preferred since we are using hypochlorous acid we need to maintain the lower ph values so small contact is required in this acidic uh, ph next uh, the advantage of chlorine the main advantage is it is uh, very effective and economical it is a cheaper method and uh, effective method it is uh, not only that the chlorine is more stable it is a more stable so liquid and uh, we can 
store in a small space it requires a small space for storage and does not deteriorate on keeping so it is more stable and another advantage it can be used at high as well as low temperatures next and it never introduce any impurities into the water so this is these are the advantages that is the reason this chlorine acts as a most ideal disinfectant disinfectant so more economical effective most ideal disinfectant is the chlorine or chlorination method now we have disadvantages also the main disadvantage if excess of chlorine is present it produces bad taste and disagreeable odor not only that it produces irritation on mucous membrane mucous membrane is uh, so get uh, deteriorated a uh, damaged uh, or we may feel irritation due to the excess chlorine present in the water next uh, the quantity of free chlorine in treated water should not exceed 0.1 to 0.2 ppm we need to take care of it we have to maintain less than 0.2 ppm and it is more effective below ph 6.5 since uh, it is an acid uh, it produces hypochlorous acid acidic medium is uh, more effective and less effective at uh, higher ph values higher ph in the sense it is basic in nature which neutralizes the acid so that the less uh, disinfection action by chlorine at higher phs so these are the disadvantages to overcome these disadvantages we have one more technique which is called break point chlorination break point chlorination in this method the chlorine is added in dosages the chlorine is added in dosages so turn by turn all the uh, impurities like living organisms uh, organic impurities are reducing matter all uh, all the other substances are completely destroyed by this method so break point chlorination means that chlorination of water to such an extent that living organisms as well as other organic impurities in water are destroyed it involves addition of sufficient amount of chlorine so chlorine is added in dosages chlorine is added in dosages in sufficient amount so that oxidizes organic matter reducing substance and free ammonia in raw water so each dose so first dose may destroy the oxidizing agents or oxidizing matter oxidizing mm, sorry first dosage may oxidize the organic matter and the next dose may reduce remove the reducing substance in that way turn by turn so as the dose is increasing the these uh, substance are destroyed next uh, uh, leaving behind mainly free chlorine which possesses disinfecting action against pathogenic bacteria here whatever the excess dose added to the water so that is the free chlorine remain in the water this what this excess chlorine which is also called as residual chlorine or free residual chlorine it shows disinfection action against pathogenic bacteria further and uh, so this is a uh, graph uh, which uh, represent the complete disinfection action by break point chlorination so here we have chlor chlorine residuals chlorine residuals in the sense uh, the chlorine the concentration of the chlorine present in the water and uh, here we are adding the chlorine doses in milligrams per liter see for the first dose first milligram per liter so it destroys destroys all the residual by reducing compounds means uh, chlorine is uh, um, completely destroyed means chlorine is consumed by the reducing compounds present in the water so the reducing substance is the reducing matter present in the water is completely destroyed and uh, that is the reason and the chlorine is completely consumed over here with this dose 
and uh, we don't find any chlorine concentration that is the reason the chlorine residual is zero here and when we go for the next dosage about two three four five you can see the dosage has added now it increases the concentration of the chlorine in the form of combined residuals combined residuals in the sense whatever the chlorine dose we are adding to the water it combines with the organic matter which forms chloroorganic compounds and also combines with the amines or ammonia to form the chloroamines and uh, the next doses of water the next dose uh, of the doses of chlorine destroys all these combined chloroorganic and uh, chloroamino compounds so that it falls down it is uh, the chlorine concentration or free residual concentration reaches minima this point is called as break point and the next doses of chlorine increases the free residual concentration because the chlorine is remain in the water and which will be showing pathogenic action in the future next advantage of this um, chlorine so um, advantage of this break point chlorination we can overcome the disadvantages which are there in uh, which are there in chlorination method the first one it ensures complete destruction of organic matter which impart color bad odor and unpleasant taste to water earlier in disadvantages of the chlorination we have discussed that the excess chlorine causes a uh, bad smell odor or uh, causes irritation on the mucus layer such a disadvantage we can avoid in this method it ensures complete destruction of organic matter which impart color bad odor and unpleasant taste to water and it completes completely destroys all the disease causing bacteria all the disease causing bacteria organic matter so all the organic matter that is disease causing bacteria is completely destroyed by this method and it prevents the growth of any weeds in water it destroys the growth of any weeds in water so that water is uh, pure and uh, we don't find any contamination in the water and with this we complete uh, water chemistry thank you